Hello. So when I've just started poker in 2011, as you've noted, there were no solvers or anything like that, only materials on poker sites like pokerstrategy.com. And then I met a couple of people from forums and became friends with. So we were discussing different hands, analyzing them, having Skype calls and stuff. And then there was Flipzilla, the most popular tool at that time, and also Cardrunners EV. So I used that as well. I think up until 2020, 2015, when the simple post flop first came out. So then I switched to that. And I also remember working a lot, analyzing top players like OTB Red Baron, and then players like Fish 2013 for Haley, Kata 18, all so called old school Russian players. So we would just buy data mining with my friend and analyze them, trying to learn new stuff. Okay, that's a great question. Um, I would say that I'm not uh, a fan of data studying for a reason, because if you play high stakes, the pool of players is quite narrow, and the best way to approach uh, your opponents is to study them individually instead of studying uh, the way he plays, because then you get a lot of discrepancies. For example, some players would underbluff using the exact line, while others would not. And speaking of GTO, the thing is, um, these things, exploit and GTO, they come inseparably one from another. It is impossible to just study one thing, for example, doing the range research and studying the way field plays without understanding GTO basics and fundamentals, because then your exploits, they would be quite random. So you need to have a theory, knowledge behind everything you do. Well, my main activity is coaching, and uh, I have my course on Cash 6 Max, mm -hmm. which is a, um, a series of videos, video lectures um, on theory and then some practical sessions. So this is one type of coaching. And then the second one is CFP, which is coaching for profits. I have groups. One is on uh, Russian language and one is on English. We have Discord channels where we discuss strategy, and then we have the live coachings. And I tried to play poker again as well. Last year, I think I played for three months. I played high stakes on apps. So I can say that uh, at, some, uh, at some point, I, I do come back to poker for a short period of time, but I'm definitely not playing as much as I used to because it used to be eight hours every day with one or two days off for like 10 years. And now I just occasionally play when I feel like that and spending most of my time studying theory and uh, coaching. It really depends because I have players. I don't work with players who play under an L200 with some made very few exceptions. I had a very few players who played an L100. And then we have to um, distinguish an L200 players from players who play higher. Because I also have some players who play 5K and L, even 10K and L, and 20K and L um, with a selection. So then obviously these players have different mistakes. If we talk about an L200 players, which is the majority of my clients, I'd say that the main mistakes are the logical ones because. These days, even though there is so much information, so many solvers and lots of materials available, what happens is that people kind of uh, get confused and they try to copy solver strategies more and more without having a deep understanding of why it works like that and how to deviate from it, which is much more important than just to try and copy the strategy. Because uh, you earn all your extra EV from deviating and from punishing your opponent weaknesses. So I would say number one mistake is logic. And number two is the overall understanding of the way GTO works. Number three, probably psychology. And number four would be a method of study. And it's, it's, it's quite an obvious, maybe the method of study, we can put it like a top one. Or, or top four problem, because all, all these things, they are you know intertwined, they are connected. If your study approach is bad, it kind of um, um, overrides 
all your previous gains if you don't invest every minute of your free time of your study time effectively you kind of lose a lot of ev in the long run so it's not that obvious like you might have those small mistakes every day which you will not notice but then in the long run you would study much less effectively and you would learn much less in let's say two years compared to somebody who does everything correctly so this is a very important thing i i would say two th two main two main uh things that would separate these players one is being the study method the way how effective it is i i remember i had a student who studied for 12 hours not well not on average but he had a lot many days a week when, a week when he studied for 12 hours doing the solar work but then he was just not doing it correctly so he did in fact invest a lot of time in studying theory but the outcome was quite bad because he has done it incorrectly and he's been doing it for a very long time like a year or two years being stuck on an l200 just not studying correctly so this is a huge obstacle towards uh the fast growth and the second one is psychology of course you can i like to tell my students that you can invest 1000 hours study in theory and do everything perfectly but then if you have some psychological leaks that you haven't fixed uh you might just lose all these gains and for example you you might gain plus 2 bb of win rate after studying solar for 1000 hours doing everything correctly but then you will lose 3 bb by doing your psychological uh, by following your psychological patterns the detrimental patterns that you didn't uh, fix first so i highly encourage to devote at least from 10 to 30 minutes to psychology every single day and it depends some people need more some people need less but if we talk about something on average i'd say from 10 to 30 minutes a day mm -hmm. Th that's a great question too thanks for asking by the way um i had some players from lower stakes who approached me and they were ready to pay the the quite high price that i charge for my students e even though it was uh outside of their bankroll and i've told them that uh, i could not accept them not because of uh the the price being too high for them even if they are ready to pay it but because uh, i would just not be as an effective coach to them as would be someone who plays the lower stakes and could deviate, uh, sorry, could devote a lot of hours um, explaining the logical, the very basic logical things. Because uh, if you have, let's say, an L5 or 10 or 25 player, 80% um, of his problems are going to be the basic logic. And to fix them, you need to spend a lot of time with him, many hours. I would say one or two hours every day if you could have sessions with a coach that would be great so he could review your hands your databases and then just fix your basic leaks so for this purpose you don't need to find a very advanced coach you don't need to pay him uh, a couple of hundred of dollars per hour you could find somebody who plays let's say an l100 or 200 and who could help you establish the basic logic and understanding of patterns and then once you reach let's say an l100 or 200 uh, at this point, you can start and uh, study the advanced things. You can start actually understanding the way GTO works on a deep level. And you can now play with the exploits, do the database analysis on a more advanced level, etc. But as a beginner, you should really work on your logic a lot. Um, I would not suggest going into deep GTO study because it, it's not what you need at this point. And regarding materials, I think um, GTO Wizard has a very nice free videos on YouTube. Plus, I think they have coaching videos for their um, subscribers. And there is a lot of great information there, which you can find for a relatively low price to, to work on your logic. So that would be my suggestion. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at both high stakes and then low stakes let's just uh, look at two polar sides so for the high stakes players i wouldn't say that games have become much worse because now you have a lot of great action on gg it really depends when you get the vap players who you know come from time to time 
For example, there were a couple of players who've lost a couple of millions last years, and then many regulars have profited from it who play high stakes. If you if you go to some poker tracking site uh, like Smart Hand or Stat Name, and you would take a look at the list of top winners, you would see that they have a very impressive winnings on GG Poker and ACR as well. Even though ACR is far from perfect with all those stories with bots being banned here and then, but then returning. The thing is, even with those problems, people are still able to make a very nice uh, money. So for high stakes players, I would say that things are not that bad today compared to previous years. Plus offline poker is getting very good. Um, my friend uh, Aurora, we worked with him for countless hours before when we both played professionally. Uh, he's now playing offline tournaments like Triton Poker, etc. And uh, the last time he went there, he was surprised by how many uh, fish, how many recreational players were in the highest uh, buying in the tournaments with the highest buy-ins. So live games are pretty good, I think. And online, if you play high stakes, you're doing pretty well these days. Maybe not as good as before, but definitely the difference is not that big. However, if we speak about mid stakes, the things did uh, got worse. It's true. It's harder to get better games, to find the, be the best games. For example, sites like Poker Stars or 88 Poker, they used to have a lot of action before. And these days, they don't have that much action. And by mid stakes, I mean NL 1K, NL, from NL 200 to NL 1K. So games uh, in the main pool. By, by the main pool, I mean pretty much all the European, all the big sites that everybody knows about, Poker Stars, Winamax, whatever. So the games have, have deteriorated um, compared to previous years, but there is some expectation to be made still. And talking of uh, the lowest stakes, there are a few things. I would say it's like in between. Some things have gotten worse, but then some things are still pretty good. For example, it's easy to find games uh, on any site. If you play lower stakes, you can find enough good games if you select well. And selecting well while playing low stakes is number one skill, I would say, because the rake is extremely high and you will not be able to beat those games unless you have a very good recreational player uh, at your table. So you must select well, make it one of your number one priorities. So. Another thing about the lower stakes, it was easier in the past to climb up on a poker ladder because uh, you had ra you, you had pretty high rake back, you had many different um, promotions which helped you to uh, make some extra buck. But now I think rake has gotten higher and higher on most sites and it's gotten worse, but still you can still make some money. So when I was an active high stakes player, as I've said, I did not work with them a lot, only doing some basic things. For example, I would check how do people defend, for example, on king high boards, button versus cutoff in three bet pots. Do they overfall? Do they overcall compared to GTO and other things like that? So only the basic ideas, not going into deep like uh, many people do when they study, let's say, bet check, raise line using this size and that run out and then trying to find some patterns that work for for field on average i don't like the idea of average and i explained it very briefly in my newsletter on my site which can be downloaded for free by the way um i've given i've given a comparison there imagine you have a nitty player who plays 15 vpap and 11 pfr just collecting the nuts and waiting for the VAP players. And then you have a very aggressive player who plays 35 VPAP and 25 VFR. And then when you do the MGA, if you study both of these players, what you get is an average from these two players. So you get the picture of somebody who plays in between, of somebody who plays, let's say, with 20 VPAP and then like 17 PFR. And then you, you, the information you get will be really messed up because you will see that um, in some spots he's playing, you know, very neat. In some spots he's over bluffs, but 
on most average spots, you will see something in between these two players. And it's going to be far from the truth that you need, because what you need is you need to know exactly how to play against the aggressive guy and exactly how to play against the nitty guy. You don't need how to play against somebody average. This, it will not help you against the real players. So my approach has always been to study players individually and only do the MDA for some patterns that work for most players. Uh, just like an example that I provided before, how do people defend on different textures in some common spots? Um, and then if I do the MDAs, I try to sort players into different categories to avoid these uh, discrepancies between different player profiles to get the clear picture. Uh, yeah, something like that. But uh, the thing is, it's not like something um, exceptionally new has appeared with these functions because using the old solvers, like Pio or simple passflop, you had those not blocks. You could pretty much research all the same things, but do it much slowly. Uh, what I love GTO Wizard for is that it has a very um, good visuals, a very nice interface. And if some things took me, let's say simple passflop combined with Flapzilla combined with Holdeck, which is um, a sub software of Flapzilla that shows you the graphs and the equity distribution. Now you don't need all that. You can just you can find any solution in a couple of seconds using GTO Wizard. So it saves you a lot of time, and time is the the most valuable resource. So this is what I see. What I see that uh, has changed. Now you can study spending much less time, but it's not like you can find some things that were impossible to find before. It's just about the convenience and speed. But not nothing, um, you know, outside yeah. of the common knowledge. Sure, uh, it's actually pretty simple. I think it's just my my bad uh, doing the site doing the explanation on site. Basically, this is the same course. Um, I have around sixty hours of theory lectures uh, recorded and practical uh, sessions recorded as well, and you can see the list of topics uh, on the first page. And the uh, 2024 course is the one that is recorded and course of 2025 is the same course 2024 plus 18 new sessions that will be recorded with my new CFP group that starts in two weeks. So 18 new sessions, which is around from 30 to 40 hours of new theoretical and new practical videos. So basically that the 2025 course is just going to be almost 2x bigger than the previous one and it will have all the fresh um, data bases, uh, sorry, M MDA researches, um, rag analysis, fish analysis, and, and all the new things that I've developed recently. Um, my plan is as follows. When I, so this course right now that I have, the, which is called Jcash 2024, this is like the seventh version of my um, course on cash that have been um, constant that has been constantly updated, updated and uh, refurbished. New videos have been recorded. Um, so my plan is to keep improving those videos so, because most of materials, for example, GTO uh, understanding of GTO, these things they do not change. If we speak about poker with you in 10 years, same GTO principles will, will work because poker is a solved game and these things, they just never change. So um, talking about GTO, I will only record new videos to if I have something new to say, which I do from time to time to, 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 you know, to use better graphics, to use better examples, but the core stays the same. And what I work most on these days is exploits, because exploits, uh, these things, they change depending on the stakes you play, on the field you play, and it de they depend on the tendencies. For example, before GTO Wizard, uh, people used to play a pretty common preflop strategy, which did not have any slow plays. For example, button versus blinds, people used to not call a skin off combos or they used to never slow play that and they also used to never shove against the three bet in 100 bb stacks 
when the NGTO wizard comes out and it has this new preflop that takes into account lots of important things like the buncher effect. Um, and then people started doing it. So now they have slow plays, now they have shoves preflop. So you have to take these things into account and uh, refurbish your postlop strategy a little bit. That's just a simple example. And then there are just many things, many exploits you can build. You can, instead of playing a simple strategy, let's say plot C bet in position, block bet size only, on most boards, you could add over bets. You could use pot bet size C bet only. You can deviate, you can create as many complex strategies as you want, as long as you have the fundamentals, as long as you understand all these important things then you can create many exploits on top of them. So my plan is to study new field tendencies and then create new exploits that will work the best.